so take two. <laughs> uh, taking the Jeep then to Sid Dillon to uh, get rid of it. So the Jeep will no longer be mine in approximately uh, 10 minutes. So it will belong to the Sid Dillon dealership out of Fremont, Nebraska. Uh, traded it in for a 2014 Chevy Silverado 1500 High Country. Two-wheel drive with a 5.3 liter V8. That's uh, E85 and all that other good stuff. The funny thing is, is I got a Sid Dillon truck right behind me right now. So, <laughs> but uh, anyway, so people are probably thinking, wait, uh, didn't you just get that Jeep like nine months ago? Yes, I did get this Jeep nine months ago. And then you come to the soon realization that, you know what, while Jeeps are very, very capable off-road, uh, in my case, I've never taken it off-road. And, well, other than driving around over at, you know, my dad's or the boy's grandpa's acreage, it's never truly been off-road since I've owned it. And in Nebraska, there's not a lot of, unless you go mudding or something like that, I hate muddy. I'll tell you that right now. I had a 4x4 one time, actually 11 years ago, and went mudding one time, said I would never do it again. I hated it so much. Uh, not so much the muddy part, that's fun. It's the cleaning process after the muddy. That sucks. And it was like, well, just leave it all on there. No, 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 no. I'm not like that. I like my vehicles looking pristine. I mean, granted, if it's got scratches and stuff like that in the paint, okay, it's got scratches and stuff in the paint. You've earned those. You've got those out there on the rocks or the tree branches or whatever might have rubbed up against the paint. But letting uh, dirt and grime, sand and everything else completely wear away all your protection and then you start rusting, especially in Nebraska where they use salt and brine and gravel on all the roads. Yeah. No thanks. I'm not into that. But uh, props to those out there that are, but not my cup of tea. Uh, from most of my videos, you'll know that I'm more into uh, taking stuff to the autocross or racetracks um, or car shows, all that kind of stuff, doing uh, custom work. But anyway, so the truck I'm going to go get, uh, it's out of Dallas, Texas, so not a speck of rust on it anywhere. Extremely clean, uh, low miles, so I can't complain. Uh, and then obviously, I already got a list of plans for it. So, looking, you know, stuff like 4.6 drop and the Pro Charger for the 5.3, uh, having it specifically tuned just for E85, well, and gasoline if uh, possible because it's a flex fuel vehicle. And yeah, so I'm looking forward to all that. Plus, it's the high country. I mean, I'm impressed. Good job, Chevrolet, on all your. Uh, all your things that you have done with your interiors because that was always my biggest complaint about Chevrolets is their interiors out of all the car brands that America you know available here in America I always thought Chevrolets had by far the worst interiors something must have changed in 2014 because that truck is nice I'm highly impressed so anyway it was like well if you're in a Jeep what kind of hey this Jeep interior rocks person who had this Jeep before me got every single option you can imagine in this Jeep other than the automatic transmission which I actually applaud them because I'm not a huge fan of automatics even though the truck is going to be an automatic uh, I mean but there's no option for the manual in the V8 trucks so that takes that out of completely out of the equation uh, anyway this will be the first automatic transmission vehicle I will have owned in, since I had my Nissan Titan back in 2005. And that's, uh, that's a long time to go without an automatic. Now, granted, the wife's got automatic vehicles, but but uh, those are hers. She gets to drive those all the time. I only drive those when we go on long road trips. But uh, anyway, give you kind of my uh, take on the actual pluses and minuses of the Jeep Wrangler. So this is a 2013 Jeep Wrangler. Uh, it's the uh, unlimited, so the four-door Rubicon. So fully optioned, 
weather, heated seats, Uconnect with uh, navigation, DVD, all the bells and whistles, Bluetooth, everything. I mean, so uh, pretty much like I said, I went on, I got the window sticker for it and everything else to look at what's all available on this Jeep. And then I looked at what all options were available and it's like they went down the list just checking every single block. And the other thing is, is this Jeep is actually a Canadian Jeep. So it's got a couple of small things that American Jeeps didn't have in 2013. I don't even know if they still do it yet in the 2014, 2015 range. And that's like daytime running lights. Can't get that on the 2013. I mean, you could probably program your computer to do it. Uh, I'm not for sure if you can or not. I didn't really look into what you can do to U.S. Uh, Jeeps. But for the most part, everything's exactly the same, but you get a couple of little things added on. So, But uh, other than that, I mean, yeah, the Jeep. I mean, this, this particular model is what I would consider the luxury Jeep. Plenty of room in the back seats for the kids to be in there. Uh, actually, we can get three people with two car seat booster seats type things. So for the two six-year-olds, the twins. And then we have our 19-year-old uh, niece living with us. So she fits in, in between them comfortably. That's the same. So, I mean, granted, she's not like, she's a little tiny thing. I mean, she only weighs like a, maybe a buck one wet. But, uh, but she fits in there nice and comfortably. Uh, so whenever all five of us need to go someplace, we always take the Jeep. So there's always that. Uh, the Jeep community seems to be pretty tight for the most part. I mean, granted, there's a bunch of people driving Jeeps. I don't think have any clue what that whole thing is about. Uh, but for the most part, in Omaha, there's a big Jeep club, everything else. Omaha, I believe it's Jeeps of Omaha or something like that. Uh, never really got in contact with them because I hadn't had it that long. I was planning on doing it in the spring, but I decided, you know what, I needed a trunk bed. But anyway, other things about the Jeep, uh, great stereo system. That was probably my biggest complaint about the car I traded in. I had a 2013 STI and the stereo system in it sucks. Granted, it's a pretty much a race car put on to a civilian or streetcar platform, so they didn't really care about the stereo system. However, when you use it as a daily driver, sometimes it's nice to have a nice stereo system. But, uh, but yeah, the, uh, the Alpine stereo system in here, man, it's, it's legit. I like it. Subwoofer in the back, speakers up around, so it's pretty much like a surround sound deal with the speakers. So definitely enjoy all that. Uh, other things I liked about the Jeep, uh, one, ground clear, that's great. 4x4, uh, if you use it, it's probably awesome. Uh, I used it one time just to make sure it worked. So, other than that, I've never used it since. I mean, we've gotten snow and ice and everything else, and I've never had to use it. So, so a lot of people are like, well, why aren't you getting a 4x4 truck? You live in Nebraska, and all my friends I work with and all that stuff are asking me that kind of stuff. I grew up in Nebraska. Yes, I'm stationed here again, but I grew up here. So all my cars growing up here were real wheel drive. You'd learn how to drive in the crap. I mean, as long as you're not an idiot and you know what to do if you do hit a slick spot, take care of business. Don't be, don't be an idiot. Don't overreact. Don't panic. But that being said, I know what's going on when it comes to the uh, uh, snow and crappy weather in the winter time with the two-wheel drive. But So I didn't want a four-wheel drive. I wanted a two-wheel drive. It's lighter. Don't have all that extra stuff up in the front end. So so that's just the uh, that's just the portion that uh, I was looking for. Uh, once again, here I am getting back on the truck. I'm excited to get this truck. This truck is uh, awesome. And you know what? I'm going to go to the next exit. Acceleration in the Jeep. This six-speed manual, it's legit. This Jeep actually boogies to 60 pretty quickly, so... I mean, granted, it's a Jeep, so it's not like, oh, it's super fast. But I'm, uh, I'm doing 70 already, so... I mean... This 3.6... 
liter Pentastar with the variable valve timing, 24 valves, so it's a legit drivetrain in this Jeep. A lot of people are like, oh man, that's a heavy vehicle for a V6. <laughs> this V6 kicks ass. I'm uh, quite impressed with it. So, and the only Dodge I've ever owned was a 2009 Dodge Challenger SRT8, so I had the 6.2 liter. And, I mean, that's, that's a legitimate engine right there. That's a ton of power. So getting it into a Jeep that's even heavier than the Challenger, uh, it was just one of those deals where it's like, oh, this thing's probably gonna be gutless, underpowered. Nah, they did a great job on that Pentastar. So, but anyway, love the interior in this thing. Uh, love the stereo. Love the six-speed manual, the Pentastar uh, engine, especially with the 410 gearing in the Inclined rear end. Call. Press you connect phone button nope. to answer. Nope. 